Let me try this again. Let me go to Julie's. This is the law of God and the Sabbath. It goes, we're on Sabbath day, prayer. Sabbath day, prep. Wow, good thing I went green. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Um, this is the Sabbath day prep show, giving you guys a little bit of an update. Tell you what's going on. Y'all can tell me what's going on in the world too. I can tell you what I know. You tell me what you know. What's going on in the world. Hopefully y'all will participate in the comment section. Hopefully I'll be able to see your comments. I'm gonna go screen, show the screen scripture like this. Screencasting. It me in the comments don't uh jive. I don't get to see them as well. But anyway, so how's everybody doing today? Um getting ready for Purim on Sunday. Purim is Sunday here at the Gabriel Homestead. We're gonna be having our first praise the Lord Father in heaven, Father willing, we're gonna have our first. Sunday dinner in a long time. Straight up Sunday dinner. I'm trying to make it straight up just like Sunday dinner. Purim. Purim is a time where we share with others. We don't have back in the day they were sharing some other stuff with them. But we ain't gotta do that part now. It's not our fight now. So we don't have to inflict any harm on anybody. In fact, our job is to um help those that are suffering from the harm that they are causing to themselves. And so that's what Purim is about. And that's what we'll be doing here at the Hillbilly Homestead. Um, we're having a Sunday dinner. If you wanna come by, uh, send me RSVP. Um, but we are inviting all the local people who normally come to our house and everybody else who you think might think about it um, for a good old fashioned Sunday dinner. And the reason why is because Purim starts on Sunday. That, uh, the, dang, I ain't looking at my calendar, but it's like the 25th. I don't know if it actually um, starts. And so, it's, but it lasts for like three days. Um, the 13th day of the lunar month is when it kicks off. And you have the 14th day and then the 15th day, which is the, um, big celebration, but you can find link, you, know, you can find a um, um, calendar, a picture of a calendar, an image of a calendar, whatever you want to call it. You can find the calendar um, over at our community section. You have to go all the way to the channel, um, look down there where it tells you um, to choose from videos, podcasts, playlists, and all of that. Scroll over and show you what it says community. You get in the community, you can find calendars, um, downloads, links, and videos and, um, that we think are um, way too important to uh, wait on us to try to do something with. We'll give you a link to a whole video. <sighs> because, um, and, and one, one video, I, I, I talk about this last video that I gave is from, I think his name is Suspicious Observer or something like that. And um, um, he doesn't have a spiritual side to his channel, if you know what I mean. But the science part of everything is starting to line up with what's going on here in the world. Um, and I praise the Father in heaven that, you know, he allowed uh, me to get educated a little bit on how all of this science works because they're going to marry up that's one of the other things that's going to marry up here in these end times is science and religion for lack of a better word it's because the scientists are going to um, start to understand the spiritual side to all of this and then it's going to work, make way more sense to them you know, why our dna is you know has our father's name in it why our cells seem, seem to um, vibrate like planets, you know, why all of this stuff is, is why, why are uh, those wandering stars out there seem to tick like a clock. All of this, the sciences, they're gonna discover this, why we actually have 
a uh, conscious. They're going to discover that why we're going to why why and how our conscious works, why it is in there, and all of that. They've already been knowing it, but only really the sinister side of the world has paid any attention to it. And so that's what all of these. Um, I ain't gonna get into all of that, but the um the pole shift. You guys, everybody's everybody interested in that um equinox. Well, you have another. Uh, it, uh, not an equinox. Everybody's interested in the eclipse. We have another eclipse coming up on the 25th. That's um, around the time of Purim. That's another eclipse. And the the purpose of the eclipse is to line up your clock so you absolutely know what time it is. Ain't no, ain't no wishy-washy. Can't nobody argue. Once you got the um, book of the revolutions of the luminaries of Enoch and the proper timing of you know the wandering stars you know exactly what time it is with the eclipse it's what the eclipse does it's like what we do when we come in on the day of remembrance and forward our celestial clock calendars um it's the same thing it's a recalibration of our clock that's what the pole shift is too i believe i believe go in the bathroom break if you don't like making up stuff but i believe that the pole shift is um, an alignment of our planets. Basically, when our planet gets ready to, well, not our planet, when our solar system gets to the point where we're ready to make another tick on the clock, another, you know, a bell to ring, it jars the planet. It actually jerks the planet in such a way that, that it, it causes earthquakes here on our planet but what I believe is happening is it's just a natural clicking of the clock. Just like a just like you look at your second hand on that clock that when it makes that that thing, you know, the um when it makes it the, the little tick, you're looking at an old fashioned analog clock when you see it tick, watch that hand really closely and see it only vibrate. That's our planet shaking. When we make this next tick on the top on the clock, it's gonna vibrate. It's gonna shake the it's gonna shake the earth. Um, Maverick, uh, Maverick Star Reloaded. He'll show. He'll tell you about that how it's gonna shake, and the Bible will tell you too. It's gonna shake like a dog getting out of the water, just, just throwing stuff, cars, buildings, people, everything, just all over the place for a short time. But that ain't the problem. The pole shift ain't the problem. I mean, the, uh, yeah, the pole shift ain't the problem either. The electrical part of it that they keep talking about. They try to concentrate on the electrical part of it, saying that it ain't going to be no big deal. It's just going to knock the power out. Yeah, that's going to be a big deal because your freezer going to go out. <laughs> your freezer going to go out too. But they act like that's all going to be, um, that's all go with it. But you have to um, remember the subsequent earthquake that always comes to shake the building down. That's going to really hurt, you know, um, the people was, you know, just look at the other nations that suffer earthquakes. And, but like I said, that's not the hard part. The hard part is after when you have to now survive without your um, freezer, without your car, without your hot water, without your uh, Walmart, without your, all of these things that humanity has come to depend on. And that's the problem. That is, that is the problem is because we have come to depend on this stuff because the last time it happened, we weren't dependent on this stuff. 1800s, um, go all the way back to the book of Acts, um, go all the way back to um, the earthquake that we hear about in, in, the, in, the, in the Bibles. We hear about one earthquake that I know of in the Bible other than around Noah's flood time. Um, even though it's flood time, the world wasn't dependent on electronics, so we didn't care about electromagnetic pole ships. All that to us back then, a hundred, I mean, a thousand years ago, the only thing an electromagnetic pole shift would have did to us. Let me think, what would it have done to us? What would we have noticed other than the earthquake? You didn't notice the earthquake. But other than that, you just saw some bright lights in the sky. That would have been it. So you'd have missed the bright lights in the sky because you'd have been asleep. And then you'd have felt tremors and stuff around you that would shake your house, didn't messed up your little foundation and stuff like that. You'd have fixed it and you'd have kept it pushing. That's it. But now 
it's different. Now we got high rise buildings. They all going to collapse. Now we got uh, prisons. They all going to fall apart. Now we got hospitals. The lights going to go off in them. We got now we got churches. They just going to fall down on the people. Now we got um, um, computers. They all going to get shut down. Now we got freezers. Food just going to rot. Now we got trucks bearing the fruit. They just going to be stuck on the road. Now we got uh, security systems. People going to lock people in and lock people out of their own stuff. Yeah, now it's different. 2024, big deal. Whole shift is a big deal. Whole shift is a big deal. So I mean, it's going to be a big deal, you know, because our houses are not built for it. You know, the house I live in right now, praise the Father in heaven, it was here in 1888, I believe. I believe it was, I know it was here in 1890. Um, but so it's, it's, it's been survived it and it's leaning. You know, it didn't survive earthquakes that could have happened here since that. Then where dude said the best place to hide is up in the mountains. What's his name? Oh, that's suspicious observer too. He said the best place to hide is at his house. <laughs> you notice that, right? Everybody's best place to hide is at their house. Ain't nobody got to move. Everybody said, and, and they plan is the best one too. Everybody got the best plan and everybody got the best house and everybody got the best, everything, everybody ready, right? You go to everybody and say, hey, pole shift. And they're like, I'm good. I got, I got everything I need. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Especially ones that are there make a video and say, hey, I know what I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know how to prep. You notice I ain't told you how to prep. I ain't but one way to prep, and that's the script. You're looking at the one way to prep right here. This is the one way to prep right here. That's it. Because there ain't nowhere to hide. You can't hide. What you hiding from? The, 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 the things that are coming up on the world are designed for each individual. Down to your cell and your body has its own tribulation to go through. It's personal. It's personal. Personal. Everything is personal in this whole thing. It ain't like back in the day where you got two million people being drilled around the desert. No, it's gonna be you and your family, and you and your loved ones, you by yourself, you and your dog, whoever. You know who you is. It's you and the Holy Spirit. That's it. That's the only way to survive. Is that just like they did back then? You gotta have that pillar of fire and then smoke at night. You gotta have it. If you ain't no, I got it backwards. Smoke in the day and pillar at night it was the same thing it's just you know the vapor of the smoke vapor of the fire at night was able to be seen in the day but it was the same you gotta have that that's the only way to survive and, and if you got that wherever you at is a way to is the perfect place to be it don't matter you could be in prison you good you good you could be in prison in haiti you good as long as you got the our father Guiding his father, his guidance, which he promised to give us in this time. As long as you lined up with it, you, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You ain't got a bowl where you're moving to. You're gonna move to somebody else's problems, is what you're gonna do. You're gonna move to somebody, you're gonna move to some something somebody else is supposed to get. Some things that somebody else is supposed to get. You they, they give you to move to uh uh the Middle East over there with what's the name? Nick. Where would you be? You be getting what Nick's supposed to be getting over there. So you ain't supposed to move, you're supposed to stay where you at. I believe, and then when the spirit tell you to move, you be ready to move. But he tell he gonna tell us to move. It's supposed to it's supposed to be so. Um, what's the word? It's supposed to be so. I'm gonna say spiritual for lack of a better word. In this tribulation, this apocalypse, when it really goes down, that you're actually gonna be able to see the angels make moving. They ain't got time to hide from you anymore. They're gonna be like, hey, move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like lot when they had to actually physically come and pick them people up and grab them by the hand and say, we got to go. That was a pole shit. That was a pole shit. That was one of the big ones in the time of Abraham. The big three pole shifts, well, they're, they're, you know, you call them big, but the, the big ones were Abraham, the Messiah, and now. Abraham, the Messiah, and now. Um, these are the, um, and, and, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The father is the Abraham part. That's Abraham, means father. 
the Son, that's the Messiah part, and the Holy Spirit part is where we get ready to change to now. We're not changed to. The change is that we're actually going to embrace the Holy Spirit. Before, we ain't recognized who the Holy Spirit was. And even when we did recognize a Holy Spirit, we basically said it was in us and we got the Holy Spirit, never realizing that the Holy Spirit is everything around us. And it's all of all of everything. It's our mother. Our Holy Spirit takes care of us. It's your food, your water, your clothing, your protection, your solar system, everything. That's the whole, that's your mama. That's our mama. That's our universal mama is the Holy Spirit. And we and, and we wasn't really ready, I'm going to say, to understand that until this time. And I say it because it was our Father's plan, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it came 2,000 years apart. You go Adam, 2,000 years, you get Abraham, roundabout, not, not exactly, I'm rounding off, I'm rounding up too. But you go Abraham, I mean, you go Adam, to Abraham, that's 2,000 years. Abraham to the Messiah, that's 2,000 years. And then the Messiah to now, that's 2,000 years. And so, yeah, it's, it's um, and that's what it's about. These stars are lining up. And what our father does is knowing what's going on. Of course, he's omniscient. Um, um, what's that? I didn't, I didn't that. But he, he uh, knows the future and he knows exactly what's going to happen when. And so what he does is he sends us a savior to help us in that time. Back there, I say one time was uh, the ark, Noah and the ark. The second time was uh, uh, Moses and the ark. I ain't gonna say the second time, but another time, because it happens a lot. Um, uh, it happens like every 490 years is what it does. But uh, during Moses' time, we had an ark um, to get us across. And then um, we got an ark now. And I know I'm jumping around, but the ark now is, uh, two things. There's two ways to get in and or on the ark. You have to be in and or on the ark. There is an ark. Just, just imagine Noah's ark. You could be in the ark or you could be on the ark. And imagine, you know, what it's like. Those in the ark are comfortable and chilling out and relaxed. And they ain't worried about it. They dry, let me say. The ones on the ark are on top of it. They wet. And they catching some of the blues from the storm that's up there. But they're going to survive. Okay? So, now, if you want to be in the ark, you have to do the law. You have to be a law abider and, and do charitable deeds. Both. If you want to be on the ark, you're like, I ain't got time to run back and get all that oil. I want to hurry up and get safe now charity the charity part puts you on top of the ark you can start giving your stuff away right now stuff you don't need give it away you got two coats give one of them away you know right now start giving 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 to people that need 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 right now if you don't have uh resources give time do stuff for people do stuff fix stuff repair stuff for for widows and um babysit um Fatherless children, do stuff. Charity, got to do charity. That puts us on the ark right now. Now, if you want to get in the ark and survive some of this storm that's coming, you got to get in the law. That's Exodus chapter 20, uh, which is the Ten Commandments, but it's also the statutes, which is Exodus chapter 23, and the judgments, which is Exodus chapter 21 and 22. So you have four chapters, Exodus chapter 20, 21, 22, and 23, that's going to get you the, that what that does, well, understanding that it, tell, it, it it basically helps you to understand what it is you're supposed to be doing when, how, what, you know, when you're supposed to sit down, when you're supposed to stand up, when you're supposed to give, when you're supposed to take, when you're supposed to fight, when you're supposed to uh, uh, basically take the hit. Um, it, it basically breaks um, the rules of life down for us basically breaks the rules down for us. And then the Messiah came and told us to be charitable to our brother. He told us to love our brother. So we got to have both of them. That's the, that's the uh, other part. The charity part, when we actually go love our brothers and, you know, love and charity, they try to act like them words that are saying, but they ain't. I can tell you I love you all day. I, I, can even, uh, prove, I can even prove to you that I love you over the phone. But it's real hard to prove that, I, that I'm... Um, um, that I have charity for you over the phone unless you got cash tap or something like that and I can shoot the loot through because charity you actually have to do something 
You have to do what it takes to act. Like, love don't really take an act. You know, love can be not killing you right now if you're out there in, in, in the war zone right now. A man can show you love by not sending that bullet through your head and just walking away. That's love for real. But, you know, charity is different. Charity, he actually got to come and help you. He got to come pick you up. He got to come, you know, help you off the battlefield kind of deal. It's, it's different. So we got to have charity now. Got to have charity now. That's why they're picking on the good leaders. They call you a good leader. Ooh, he good leader. He did do goody two-shoes. Yeah, because that's the way to the kingdom. And they know that. They don't want to go. They're like dogs standing at the, you know, at the, at the trough where the cow's supposed to eat, where the sheep's supposed to eat. You tie the dog up by the sheep trough, and now the sheep can't eat because the dog's standing there barking every time the sheep try to come and get some food. Well, that's those people who's standing in our way, trying to interfere with all of this that's going on and trying to make it so that, you know, we are ignorant to it so that they can have their way. That's what you got to understand. The, the next click on the clock puts us in the age of Aquarius. That's a big deal. They make songs about that. I wish I, I wish I had an album with all of the songs that that talked about the age of Aquarius. The Commodores, all kinds of people talk about it. They, um, it's the age of truth is what it is. I hope y'all can hear me. But it's the age of truth is what it is. Uh, we're in the Piscean age now. This is the age of deception. People like lies. That's the age, of, that's the Piscean age just the, that's been here since the Messiah. The Messiah ushered in the, um, the Piscean age. Imagine if he didn't, right? This is the age where people stop liking or preferring truth and start actually preferring deception. Look at the movie. Go to the, go to the big movie theaters now and look at the box office ticket sales. The one, the documenting the truth movie, how many tickets, how many people buying tickets to it? But the straight up nonfiction, you know, sci-fi movie, how many people buying tickets to it? And that's what we're talking about. That's the age we live in. People like soap operas. They love soap operas. And we're starting to transition over into the age of Aquarius. You start to see that when people start liking more reality kind of TV kind of stuff. But it's still TV and it's still made up and it still lies. And but, you know, we're getting closer to the truth with reality. At least, you know, we think it's more real. And it is a little bit more real. Everything on TV is TV. Tele television. Programming. Programming. Pro program today. But watch your television program. So, and that is the way we're programming the people. Now, the cell phones is our... Programmers, our teachers, our babysitters, our lawyers, our consultant, everything, and the, and the phone itself. And the thing about the phone, like you see, they're messing with Apple now. That the way they messing with Apple is that's that's actually what's going on with all of the internet world. Is where people just feeding you what they want, taking you know, putting chips in their own uh, bucket, so to speak, not worrying about. If you're getting the, 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 what you need, like for instance, if, if, if it was just food, Apple basically going to come in and say, you're just going to eat our candy or our food. And, you know, they don't really care if you're getting the food you need, you know, for your own personal survival. They don't care. It's like McDonald's. McDonald's don't care where you get your big green vegetables from. That ain't their problem. They'll give you a salad if you want to. A little may look like it's been in there since this morning. You better check the date. But they're there to say you hamburgers. And so, and, 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 and yeah, and McDonald's manipulated the, the whole meat market so that every, every hamburger you eat now is McDonald's hamburger. Don't believe it? Look it up. Don't believe it. Every, every hamburger you eat now from the store is a McDonald's hamburger. You say, well, how is that? Because before McDonald's, you would have got a variety of different meat. All of it would have been different. You'd have bought this brand of meat over here and it would have been grass fed. And you'd have bought this brand over meat over here and it would have tasted different. And you'd have been like, oh, I don't like such and such brand of meat. I don't like grass fed beef. I like such and such brand. It tastes way different. Well, it was like that before McDonald's. And when McDonald's came in and started making so many hamburgers, it industrialized the, the 
beef market, now all your beef tastes the same. I can go to California and buy a steak, and I can go to New York and buy a steak, and I can cook them both, and you will not be able to tell which came from which part of the world. They're the same now, thanks to McDonald's. That's the whole world like that. It's all about business. And that's why they're interfering with us in this pole shift is because when it goes down, they want they want to stack the chips back over in their side. Like we all playing Monopoly here at the table and everybody got their chips. I ain't got nothing but a little bit of chips. I'm looking over there at your chips, but I know at some point, Big Drake gonna come in here and push the table over and all the chips gonna fall. Well, when they fall, I already know they're gonna fall, so I'm gonna hurry up and scoop mine and some of yours over here in my pile because you ain't gonna know what to do. You're gonna be sitting there with your mouth open in shock and I'm gonna be scooping up these chips, pulling them, talking, these mine too, these mine too. Well, that's their plan. That's everybody's plan. That's everybody, what they mean by the reset. That's how they plan on resetting. Joe over there got a million dollars. I over here got a thousand dollars. But it's just like them chips. When they all fall, he ain't gonna know which one he is. Some of them just gonna naturally fall over on my place. Hell, what's going on? Yeah. Joe Bob gonna be asleep. I'm gonna be over there gathering some of his chips. What they plan to do. That's why you got all these FEMA camps. That's why you got them stacking up, you know, all of these other resources for the time. You know? And the, the superstars and stuff, they they just got information that we don't know about. And so and they claim, like we say, everybody got a plan. If you get hit in the mouth, you're gonna hit in the mouth. The only real plan is to have our father's help, have him guiding us. And the only way we're gonna have to do that is like we read in Exodus chapter 23, is obeying the covenant and getting the covenant angel. Read it, it tells us in there. You know, I was reading about five, six years ago. Um, my situation was much different than it is today. And I was reading in a script. I'm like, man, according to this, tractors and stuff supposed to fall out of the air. You're supposed to be like, you know, I need a tractor. Oh, what's that? You know, that looking as a, a big bird, you know, bringing a, a tractor and dropping them off in your yard. And there you got one. And so I was thinking on that. And it, let me tell you how it actually happens. <laughs> we got a tractor. Let me tell you how it actually happens. Um, one of you guys sent us a, a love offering, thanking us for the teachings um, last week. We we I was going through the emails, searching for some emails that you know some of you guys had, had sent in, saying if you had some questions, the email. I got a thing from PayPal. It's like somebody sent you this over there. And, you know, and so I appreciate you guys for doing that. And I'll sit there what I'm supposed to do with this now. <laughs> you know, and of course you pray for the Father, for guidance, because you know that he always got a plan for it. But then on yesterday, that my wife came and said they about to take the tractor to the junkyard. The tractor that, yeah, the, the tractor that I personally got $1,000 invested, like a community tractor versus a family tractor that I have got running one time. And, you know, we needed a, a part now that nobody wanted to pay for and still does. But anyway, so they'll just go take it to the junkyard. <laughs> and so, you know, Lord, Father, willing in heaven, then they, they play the whole, you know, we don't want to help you thing. We ain't going to give you nothing thing. Make sure you don't got to charge you double, you know. So, right the Father, I'm going to give you what you want. What you want. Tell me what you want. Spare out a number. And so, um, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the person who sent me that they sent me ten, and so they know who they are. And they know what ten is, <laughs> and basically I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the the uh, tractor and the cedar, the uh, tiller, and the cultivator, and everything else that goes with the tractor for seven. Seven. That's more than it's worth. But, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I appreciate how the Father do that because, praise the Father in heaven, when I put that seven in, in he put the rest of that seven in the hand, uh, uh, it's mine. It ain't, it ain't a family tractor no more, it's a my tractor. Y'all don't seen that tractor in, in, in videos before. Anyway, 
Then now that my yard now. They was about to take it to the junkyard. Straight up about to take it to the junkyard. Straight up. About to take it to the junkyard and get two hundred dollars for it. Each tire on that tractor is worth two worth two over two hundred dollars. The two the each tire is worth more than two hundred dollars. And they was about to straight up take it to the junkyard for metal. <laughs> Metal. So we got a year to get it going. It's, 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 it, it, it won't run. Well, it'll run, but it won't teal. It won't plow. It got no strength. It got no power. Got hot one day. But anyway, so that's how it works. Bam. Just like that. Shit like that. Bam. You know what I mean? If it, if it was not for the fact that we're in a Jubilee year, Man, I'll be buying seed right now. What we what y'all want? Peas, beans, open. <laughs> what y'all want? Corn. We tired of this GMO corn. We're gonna find us some non-GMO corn. Yeah, we don't, well, ain't nobody growing no corn around here. That cotton right here. So. Yeah, anyway, Jubilee year. So we got another year of no plenty harvesting. The reason why, guys, is big, I believe, back from break. The reason why I believe that we're in these jubilee years and sabbatical years is because all this stuff is going on with these pole shifts, these alignments with these stars, these wandering stars causes uh, fluctuations in our electromagnetic fields that affects us. And so if we out there bending over every day, picking strawberries or whatever, we're more prone to get that every day. Think about it. If we back, we we, we, we live in, a natural lifestyle with not all this industry, that's what we would be doing. We would be out there every single day doing something. You have something to do in the garden, in the field every day, hoeing, tilling, cultivating, planting, watering, um, fertilizing. It's an all day job. Every day, all day job. Well, not all day, but it's an everyday job. You, you don't take a long time to do the work, but you got to do something every day. And so you would be subject to uh, solar flares, solar radiation. You'd be subject to all of this stuff. And one of the reasons why I say that is that, you know, in the book of Revelation, it said that the people who don't, you know, obey the covenant and keep the Sabbath, they're going to get plagued on them. I'm like, well, how is that possible? Well, they must be going, they're going to be doing something different on the Sabbath day than we are. And what is that? They're going to be working. They're going to be out there working. They're going to be going to the office. They're going to be doing whatever while we at the house resting. They're going to be doing whatever. And you can imagine the day when it all goes down. Like all the people that will be stuck in traffic, the cars will stop working. And so a lot of them will have to get out of the car and, and move and do this and do that. And so they're going to be definitely exposed. All of a sudden, they're going to be exposed as they're walking around out there on the road. And imagine a place like um, in the city, on the, on the freeway, how hot that and, and the sun will be bouncing from every direction. And so it's not going to be intensified radiation, just like it is every day. You ride down on a hot pavement any day, it does it. But imagine now you're in the middle of a solar storm. You're in the middle of a solar flare. You're in the middle of a, a radiation storm that's actually giving you cancer. Well, you're supposed to be in the bed. You're supposed to, not in the bed, but you're supposed to be in resting. You're supposed to be in the tabernacle. I'm going to say that. You're supposed to be in the tabernacle on the Sabbath day. Same with these sabbatical years. You ain't supposed to be out there doing that. You notice that my videos changed last year. And it's because our whole life changed last year. You know, before last year, we were farmers and tillers. And everything we had to do, you know, was around here and, and actually working with hand tools in the dirt and stuff. Well, then once the sabbatical year started, we went on vacation. We went on a road trip. And what else is there to do? Hey, Ain't, ain't like we're about to go get jobs and do nothing else. We're just gonna wait for the sabbatical year to end and go back to doing what we want to do. Take a break. Everybody liking the break. Ain't nobody missing uh, cultivating, holding and tiller. I, I, I ain't gonna say they are because I was missing it. I was thinking about it today. Start thinking about you got a tractor. Start thinking about all kinds of stuff to eat. And how fun it is out there in it. And watching it grow. A man don't want us like that. He want to industrialize. The farmer, as humble as he wants you to believe he is, he don't want you growing your food for yourself. He, want, he wants to grow it for you. 
he was straight up fertilizer to death. And to the point that, you know, you can't grow it. If they gonna mess with Apple, they shouldn't even mess with the industrial farmer too. Because he making it where the little farmer can't do anything. I mean, it's hard enough to, to sell your stuff at the market when they done reduce the price down so much to where you, you can't make any money off of your little bit of what you're growing on your acre and a half. But then they put, you know, they use the, the fertilizer. You know, chemical fertilizer kill all the bugs in the ground. That's, it kills everything down there. All the bugs die from the heat from the um, chemical fertilizer that they use. Making it even tougher on the on the on the, on the other guys. They have to do stuff like go organic, you know, a niche market, you know, to to, to actually get a share of the pie. And that's what all of them are doing. They making it hard for the little guy. But the problem is the father is with the little guy. He's individualized. He ain't no industry. He ain't, he ain't father, really, you know, he ain't really in the industry like that. He really into personal relationships. So he has a personal relationship. And there is lies what the problem is, is that they, they are now capable and able to interfere with our personal relationship with our father. And give you a pill and shut all that down. And shut your whole consciousness system down and turn you into a machine droid like that. Where you will go out and kill, steal, rob, whatever. And the way they do that is by getting you to break the law. By making you break the law it turns you into an animal. You will steal, you will kill, you will sleep with somebody else's wife. You, I mean, you'll do whatever. When you don't keep the law, you're pretty much like a dog. I got that from Revelation. That little book of Revelation say, I, he, he, John said, you know what I mean? takes you back to your carnal nature. And if you was born in 1971, like I was, you will turn back into a dog. Move, you'll be barking. And I hope nobody, better hope somebody trains you not to bite. They're gonna put you in jail. Cause it's Sabbath day prep, 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 prep. I think everybody in my house listening to the live show or sleep. I usually wake them up on a Sabbath day, but stay told me not to. What y'all wanna know about? How do you get a comment in here? Oh, I mean, I pushed the wrong button. 18 people listening. Comments, okay. I, I got to turn the comments on. Not, oh, dang it. I turn on and there they are. I see all in favor in the house. I see they faded out on me. Shoot. <clears throat> I have to remember to go to black screen before I do that. Oh well. I appreciate all that all you guys do to support this channel, helping me, helping us to get this work done. And it is us, guys. You guys are part of this channel too for your support. It would not be able to happen without you guys. You are absolute part of it. Everything, every aspect of it. Um appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Everything. Uh, comments, likes, contributions, shares, prayers, uh, good thoughts, suggestions, finding errors in videos and pointing them out, uh, answering other people's comments when people ask questions, helping out in the comment section field with some of the questions, uh, being moderators, everything you guys do. Come in my sitting and listen to me in the live session. Everything. Um, 
Everything you got telling me what's stuff going on in the world. Everything you gotta do. Really appreciate it, y'all. Y'all, y'all have helped us. And I mean us, I mean the coaching the fight channel. Us is a group, all 18,000 of us, 19,000 of us, how many of us it is. But when you look at the book of Acts, when you look at the book of Acts, I started talking about the pole shift in the book of Acts on our live, last live video. When you look at the book of Acts, after the post, after the earthquake, is when the people started coming to the church by the thousands. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of people around them. So 5,000 people would be equivalent to millions now. Um, I did the math on it. You have to multiply. Y'all write this down. You can do the math too. But you have to multiply 12 times 12,000 to get 144,000. Well, you have to multiply 5,000 people that showed up. Six million people could all of a sudden get interested in the Lord and what he got to talk about. Yep. So the, so the numbers, that's why the numbers are jumping. Now, everybody interested in the eclipses and yeah, they should be. Oh, that's when something that's when he's to me they're gonna be related to these flares lining up. Each one of these wandering stars means something. You can tell all you got to do is look at them when they line up back in history. My notebook here. You might put it on the digital file. No, uh, the ninth planet. The ninth planet in, in out in the solar system, the P1, the try the one they try to demote, put it back. And that's the most important one. It's really, it ain't the most important one, but it's a big deal. That's the one that that's the one that tells us the age when we enter a new age. When that one comes around, there's this uh, full circuit. It's twelve times uh, two fifty two, two hundred fifty two years times twelve or something like that. But anyway, the last time it aligned. The last time it aligned was 1995. That would have been when we first grade getting into the Aquarian age. That's when a lot of you guys are going to remember back that you had personal experiences and changes going on in your life right around that time, 1995, 1994, 1996, 1997. That's what that song was coming around to tell us, that we're entering a new age and those first fruits were put on the wagon so that now they're going to be able to help their, them, them, their families, their communities. The next star on the list is uh, the N1, 8, N, N, E, P. The eighth, the eighth planet from the sun, the eighth wandering star from the sun, lined up in 1950. That's the year we hear about in the Third Testament of the Bible, uh, where it said that the communications would cease. You would stop getting direct communications from, um, like prophets do. Prophets get direct communications where they can tell you stuff that ain't written in the Bible yet. That's the difference in a prophet. A prophet will literally be able to come and tell you something that you're not going to be able to find in the Bible, and it's going to be straight up real and something you're supposed to be doing, just like Moses. It's like the Messiah. That stopped in 1950, according to the Third Testament, and it was that eighth planet that lined up and told us when, told us the time of that. The next one on the list, you, you, you comes around um, every 84 years, and so the last time we saw it was 1975. That was a jubilee year, just like 2024. That was a jubilee year that that planet came by. And when you look before that, the last time it lined up before 1975, which is the Jubilee year we're in now, the big deal, was 1884. 1884, the year the Third Testament of the Bible came out. You want to go through history, keep backing up 84, about 84 years, and hit that hit the Jubilee year because that's what the planet is doing. It's lining up on the Jubilee years. That is our Jubilee planet. You want to know when the Jubilee year is? Find out where that planet is at. When it's going to line up. 
The next one on the list is the J planet, the king planet, the big planet. Or is it? No. No, it ain't. The next one on my list. <laughs> number four from uh, five from the uh, star. Number five from the star. I'll come back to number six. Father just gave me that yesterday. No, actually, didn't give it to me. I ain't put it on this list yet. But anyway, number uh, five lined up and also in 1975. That's the big one. That's the one that's starting to get personal. When you get to that fifth planet, the, the, the king star, you start to get on the spiritual level as far as we're concerned. You're not just talking timing and ages. You're talking what's happening to us. When, when the Messiah was born, the, the king planet was in the virgin. He was killed. He was in the uh, it was in uh, Aries or something like that, or the, or, Sagitt or Sagittarius or something like that. Opposite. Same way with um, the sixth planet from the sun. When it's lined up on one side, you have their birth. When it's showing us his full rings and stuff, it has his birth. Right there in the middle, when the rings disappear. I didn't know they disappeared until yesterday. When it, when it crosses its circuit and comes to what it will be like a new moon, because it is like a moon, as uh, it, it comes around every 29.5 days, just like 29.5 years, just like our moon comes around 29.5 days. <clears throat> So you have uh, four periods of planet number six. One when it's showing us the four rings. One, the opposite when it's showing us the back of the rings. Once when it's showing us um, it's, it's rings lined up to where we can't see them and the front ring is moving down. And the, other, uh, the other time, uh, halfway through the cycle, or about 15 years later, halfway through the cycle, You'll also see the rings line up again where they disappear. But this time, the ring in front, the, the part of the ring that we see in the front will be moving up. And those are the gates. That's how it has gates. You look at where the ring is to determine what season that uh, star is in. And that takes you above just the regular 3,000 years. Actually puts you with um, 120 years that... You start to, when you start to combine the fifth planet and the sixth planet, you get a 120 year circuit. Actually, what it really boils down into is 119 seven year periods. Wait, 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 right? Uh, something like that. Better check the notes on that one. Everything is in sevens. Everything is in sevens. Everything is a multiple of seven. Our planet, 364 days, divide that by seven. We'll see it and all that stuff. You gotta start getting it together. Stacy say it's good, you can have it, but now you gotta explain it. Hey Stay. Good morning. Again. We live. Oh, oh, I forgot about it. I go work on the fire. You say hi. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The rising. How is everybody doing? Everybody's doing good. Saturday prep? Yep. We're talking about Saturday prep. Yep, Saturday prep. And I was just over there doing a recording. Um, Today? Yeah, you didn't see my little sign on the door saying recording? Oh. But anyway, I was over there doing a recording, and so I got to half of the uh, recording, and my computer crashed, which, you know... 
popped up a little sign and say that your screen recording will not be saved. Oh. The thing about it is I didn't get upset with it because it was everything I was reading was so good that I'm like, okay, I, I don't mind reading this over yeah. so I can get the knowledge. And the thing that it was talking about, it was talking about, I think it was talking about when we make the transition over after it called the book, it called it a, uh, the crucible. Once the crucible happens and the transition that will made and it lined up with all the stuff that, uh, you've been teaching about, about how man will start to be, you know, in harmony with the concert, how those who have done well will, um, yeah, will be, will walk, well, he will be of service to them where they was at one time of service to him. And so it was just really, really good. And so I really don't mind, even though the, the verses are like paragraphs. Was that, was that the same one you lost the other day? It was the same one I lost the other day. So you done read it three times. It's, you going to read it the third time. It's going to be the third time. But it's so good. And I'm reading it where I'm slowing myself down and actually listening to the words. Well, it's going to be better then. Where you, you know, you have to try to... Because when they wrote the great book of True Life, they didn't actually put the punctuation in the right spots. Really? Yeah. Well, so some of the times it's like where the sentence should stop it continues to go on mm, okay. and where there's a comma, you know, to say, to pause a little bit, it shouldn't be. Oh, so okay. therefore your voice has to go up and down and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you to say, uh, I don't know. It was just, it's, <laughs> it'll say something that should stop because it's asking you a question, but it continues to go on. And so a lot of the punctuation marks are, are different. So you so but, you don't have to have a personal touch to it. Can't let a computer read. It, yeah. Or else it would just nobody would. What the wrong punctuation. You gotta understand yeah. how that's why it's like that too though. Why is that? Because it was written in Spanish. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's translated over into mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's good. You know, I think yeah. you would appreciate that reading. When you And I was sitting, sitting there doing it, right? You know, I don't know what you were talking about, Jubilee's 50. I was sitting there doing it, and I was thinking about why you are so meticulous about getting, you know, like you have, you be reading, and instead of it saying his, the book could say his, and you say her or something like that, and you're like, nah, you got to do this all over again. And I'm like, okay, because people are going to be listening to this, yeah. and it's so Blindly. important. It's so important that they get this right. Yeah. And so I was enjoying. Once they that. realize, once you once you get them in the spirit, they realize what they're listening to, and they realize they're listening to scripture. They will make a, a spiritual change right there and actually start hearing the word of God coming because mm -hmm. that's what you're reading. Mm -hmm. But then if you make a bump and or change any jot or tittle in the middle, they won't notice it. Mm -hmm. And if you say this when you're supposed to say that, that will enter mm -hmm. what they think, you know, and how they act and, and what they do. And it'll take a, a lot of scripture to change whatever it was. Yeah, because a lot of people, you know, for the most part, um, most of us is not going to read that book. No, you know. But you will listen to the recordings. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah, you will mm -hmm. listen to the recordings a lot of times. And even when um, um, those who have the book, you know, we got the book, but we don't sit down and read it. Yeah. We But we listen to the recording. Uh, the first reader. Clash Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah what's he's up? reading the great book of book true, true life, life too. Mm -hmm. He's so got thankful. chapter, I don't know how far he's gotten, but we got to check his channel and see if he got any videos up. Yeah, we well, thank you for Pascal. Him. Yeah, for reading that. So, yeah. And Joe, appreciate and her Joe, reading. yeah, we reading. appreciate Joe for all of her readings. And, and Roro, wherever, Roro, wherever her is, is at. Coming. He'll get them to us one day. Hint, <laughs> 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 hint. <laughs> And, 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 and all those others who uh, who wants to read, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys, um, 
if you want to help out and do some of these readings, this is what you got to do. Step one is you got to get you a new phone. Your old, <laughs> your old phone, you already know, you ain't got no space on it. Mm. You got glitches. And plus, you want a studio phone. This is going to be a cheap phone that you're going to get from Dollar General for about $30. Uh, track phone probably don't 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 subscribe to the service <laughs> that's what i got um but you get you a cheap phone and call it a studio right first thing you're gonna download is x recorder do not put x recorder on your computer you need an and it's built for android phones it may work on your apple phone it don't really it, and it may not work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it may not it don't work with your apple phone that's why they mess with apple that's why apple won't let you work, uh, work with that it's um, download it. You can download it for free, but it's gonna put the um, extra quarter symbol on your on your, which is fine. You look at my a lot of my old videos; it has the extra quarter symbol on it. I got paid for it that it shows you, and so it's worth recorder from me. If we ain't put it on the website yet, tap the volume that you want to read. Uh, Somebody's already completed uh, volume one, the first volume. Uh, volume 12 is completed. Stacy's is working on volume 10, uh, 11. Roro is working on volume 10. And, Which one did and y'all do? 12. Um, I think Pascal, uh, you can cut, you have at least going to get through number two. So that leaves ones like three, four, five, six, all those in the middle. Are, are good and all you really need is to check in and say hey i'm gonna do this and whenever somebody else come you know and say i want to do one i'll try not to give you the same give them the same one that you know somebody else is doing um or you could just say hey let me do uh number four mm -hmm. you know a volume number four there's a lot of reading to it and, mm -hmm. and you, if you're not the person that's going to read it let us know you know and we'll we'll get people to help you out when they want to just read one book or one chapter uh, it takes about 30 minutes to to for to read it and if you just want to read one and you have a mix when you go to volume nine a mix you'll have um joe over here read one chapter and susan will read another one and earl will read another one and you'll have a mix going through that one i was just sitting here thinking you know what if a family do it you know how yeah. if you have some children that are good readers that would be or an not. amazing yeah that would be an amazing gift because in the chapter that I'm reading, this is telling you that the great true book of true life is where it's at, mm -hmm. uh, For you know, area. in this era that we're living in and that we're coming up in now. And it, that would be like a great inheritance to leave to your children, because not only will they have it to be able to listen to, but they've read it. Yeah, or they hear it in their yeah. own voice. In their own voice. And they have that spiritual teaching that they're going to need. And they're going to be so much further than... Uh, yeah. but, so much further ahead spiritually than their peers. And so yeah. and that's important in this time because that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Those are the better prepared will be the better off. Those yeah, days. it says that. It says I couldn't believe it. I'm like, Cliff need to hear this. Cliff uh -huh. is gonna like this reading. Cliff is gonna like this reading. So <laughs> yeah. Doing? So it's um, it's really good. And I can imagine that that's just one reading. I can imagine what the whole book yeah. is yeah. like. If it wasn't for the punctuation, we try to let the computer read some of it, but no, we gotta read it. And like I say, if a family took it on, they could read all of the, the uh chapters in that book. Mm -hmm. You know, like even even our family, there's six of us, mm -hmm. you know, you get read two or three, four piece and mm -hmm. knock it out. Yep. Um, and, and those books are going to resonate. Those recordings are going to resonate in people's ears for forever. They will always mm -hmm. hear that, even in their next lifetimes, even in the spirit it world. That, they're going to hear your voice. It said, it, it, said, in that, it, said it said that these teachings will not only, these teachings and your words will be heard not only in this, this is me, of course, paraphrasing, mm -hmm. not only this time, but in the hereafter. Yeah. Your voice, yeah. right? Yeah. Says your voice. Mm -hmm. They're actually mm -hmm. going to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. And so when you meet in the spirit world, whether it's a million years from now or whenever, when when I come and I say, "Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all gonna know, y'all gonna know my voice." No, hey, that's coach. Yeah, and that's where it is. You're not going <laughs> to recognize my face, and that's why we need to stop in all this idolatry because our face puts us in the third dimension. 
our spaces is, is uh, no, to, the, to, to our second dimension is going backwards. It's taking us back to the second dimension when we uh, cast our image out there. Um, but we're trying to get higher. That's why we got to ignore the image. That's why, you know, we look at scripture instead of looking at, you know, his face or my face, no ugly face. But um, <laughs> so and that's one of the things we have to do. That's to me, you know, is uh, a weapon that they're using, the images. That's why when you, when you look at Pascal's right, uh, reading in the Third Testament, they've laced it with all of that imagery idolatry mm. they do the same thing with the albums too you know you got a favorite artist that you like listening to well don't look at the album cover because you're going to see some um stuff that's trying to do opposite than what you came for and they and, and they're doing it for those people who want that there's some people around here that you know will click on the third testament to see what is what is about but you know they're really only interested in the idolatry part of it and so that's why they're going to get all of their imagery and they'll sit there looking in the eyes of this and look into the eyes of that, which, mm -hmm. yeah, does something to your spirit. All right, y'all, Stacey just start doing Sabbath day prep stuff. So I believe oh. I'm going to close this video out and get the push. Wish I could see your comments. What's Appreciate your comments, huh? You can't see it. Well, when I do the screen thing, I can't really see them. Oh, okay. All right. Well, everybody have a um prosperous and um sabbath day prep getting all this stuff done to make so that they have a comfortable rest for sabbath day yeah sabbath days now are on saturday so they start this evening at sun six o'clock not sundown but six o'clock your local time if you participate in daylight saving time which most of you do that's actually going to be seven o'clock so um, seven o'clock daylight saving time is when you really need to have everything shut down. All your cooking done, all your cleaning done, all your sweeping done, all your traveling, your shop, especially your shopping. Um, your fires need to be made, all your water need to be pumped out of the ground. Um, all of that stuff that's listed here in this chapter, that stuff needs to be, uh, that we are not allowed to do. We need to do it beforehand. Um, today, this is Sabbath day prep, and then at sundown, we're going to Sabbath day mode where we'll read uh, scripture, we'll do a lot of praying, a lot of resting, catch up on rest. And you know, because the tabernacles will be open, so we'll be uh, expecting our to send us information that we need in our personal lives as far as what we, you know, working on and what we got going. And then, um, then you have um, the Sabbath day to end on Saturday evening. Don't be like the people that's frowned upon in the Bible that runs around and tries to buy all your corn and stuff after to just go ahead and keep on resting. Uh, take advantage of that extra rest period. As we enter into as period. We, as we get ready to go on to period, that's right. And then uh, Sunday will be the first day of Purim. Uh, it's like the 13th day of the month. It's when you uh, start doing your Purim type stuff. And it's going to be uh, the next three days. So that'll be Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday will be the uh, final day of Purim. We are expecting an eclipse around Purim time, so we can expect something to do as far as, you know, um, um, all of this, I'm just going to say pole shift kind of stuff. We can expect anything like that. So we want to be doing charitable deeds. If our father decides to look down upon us, he want to find us doing good and or reading in the scripture and, and that kind of thing. Um, the Sabbath days will change on April the 8th. Um, April the 9th, April the 10th will be the first day of the season. And whatever day that falls on, that's when our Sabbath days are going to change to. And they're going to stay that way until the fall. It's the only uh, Sabbath day reckoning that works up with the Pentecost 49 day, uh, 40 day uh, celebration there. Uh, so that's why we do the quarterly Sabbath, not the monthly change anymore. So so our Sabbath days would change for those 91 days. Y'all jump over there at coachingthefight.shop. Um, our own favor is working on the channel, adding stuff and putting stuff on there. A lot of free stuff for you to get. You can download the calendar. You can download the uh, book, even the book that Stacy is talking about, The Great Book of True Life. You mm -hmm. should be able to download the whole PDF for free mm -hmm. over there on the chains on there. I believe so. Okay, yeah, so you'll be able to go over and get that um, from there. And if you want to do some recordings or anything like that, you just uh, uh, get in contact with me at inthefight at yahoo.com. That's inthefight, I-N-T-A-T-F-I-G-S-T, -T -T, at yahoo.com. And if it's not on there, um, you we know. We can email it. Yeah, we can email it to you. I'm not 100% sure. You want to get that book? You, um, um, we were talking earlier. Maybe we can get some more printed out. 
Um, so you can try to get a hard copy of it unless you work at Kinko's or down at the office. They got one of them big printers the size of a, a small car. You know, you print it off in no time. But if you got a little printer like we got here, uh, it's going to take you a few rings of paper. It's going to take you a few rings of paper to get it thousands of pages. Um, but all right, that's it. I was telling about the tractor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're telling the good part or the bad part? You're always telling the good part. Yeah. The good part. Yeah. Ain't nothing but the good part. What bad Ain't nothing but the good part, even though, you know. What's the bad part? The so fact that I got to do some work on it now before, but I got a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, year to get it going. So it's a tractor that uh, my grandfather uh, used to plow his field. So it does hold. I guess sentimental value, because as a, a youngster, I remember him being on it. And that, well, you not even as a youngster, you was there with him. Yeah, I watched him plow that field right there. Yeah, yeah. Don't so, it. so uh, we're glad to be able to to have it. So we thank him to the Most High for giving us that, because I think we've wanted one for a while. And borrowing other people's stuff is, you know, mm -hmm. you know what the law says about that if you break it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so yeah, so thank y'all for uh, all your prayers and everything, and thank you for you know being a part of this community. So. Yep. All right, y'all. With that, we're going to close it out. Peace and safety unto y'all. Happy Saturday. Love you. Salamama. <laughs>